Hi guys, I'm Kat Clay. Today I want to talk to you about Mass Effect The Legendary Edition and give you my thoughts on the first game in the trilogy. Now this is the first time I've been able to get my hot little hands on the first Mass Effect game. It came out in 2007 on Xbox 360. It's been released on PlayStation 4, but it is backwards compatible with the PlayStation 5, so you'll have no problems playing it on the console. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition includes all three games and I'm going to be playing them through in order on Insanity Mode because I'm a bit nuts. Whether you're an old fan or new to Mass Effect, there is no doubt that Mass Effect revolutionized the RPG genre. It has epic character-driven storytelling on a life and death quest to save the universe. It doesn't get much bigger than that. You play Commander Shepard, who is an Alliance soldier tasked with hunting down a rogue special operative, otherwise known in this game as a Spectre. Now, it's not long before you join the ranks of the Spectres yourself and are off on a bigger quest in order to save the galaxy. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. Bastard didn't even thank you. What do you expect from a politician? This is space opera at its finest. So if you like Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, or of course, Star Wars, then you're probably really going to enjoy Mass Effect. What sets Mass Effect apart from other games are the complex moral choices that you'll have to make along the way. You can play as a Paragon or a Renegade. Now these choices don't necessarily equate to good or bad. Paragon, yes, sure you're saving lives and probably making good positive human choices along the way. But sometimes the renegade choices, which often result in the loss of life, have better consequences. Stay back or we'll shoot. I just killed 50 bodyguards to get in here. What do you think I'll do to you? Uh, well, uh... Of course, you can't go it alone in saving the universe, and you're paired up with a team of about six members, depending on who you choose to be on the team and whether you accept them in their quests. Now, there's two human compatriots, Ashley, who kind of looks a little bit strung out and is a wee bit racist towards the other aliens, and Caden, who's a bit of a wet blanket. But the real stars of the show are your alien crew members. There's Rex, Tali, Liara, and of course, everybody's fan favorite, Garrus. Now, there are three romance options in this game, but things can get hot and heavy with some members of your crew, so you better watch out who you lock yourself in with. Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped, I need help. Before I talk about the gameplay, I do want to talk about the 4K update. Now, it is really great playing this in beautiful 4K rendered graphics. I think what really steals the show are the rendering of the aliens in this game. I think the skin and the textures are absolutely beautiful, especially on the Asari. Their skin is practically fluorescent. What struggles to come across a little bit more are the humans. Their eyes are just so weird sometimes. Ashley looks like she's a little scary. But for the most part, the Citadel looks glorious and it's nice to play in these newly rendered worlds on a big screen TV. You can't go firing your weapon at everything that moves. What the hell's wrong with you? Sorry, I thought you were one of them. Here's the tip. Two eyes, human. Four eyes, Batarian. Now onto the gameplay. Gameplay is clunky at times and look, this is a game that was originally made in 2007 and while there have been some updates to the combat and equipment systems, it's not significant enough to be a whole new game. So be prepared for that. There were times where there were some bugs in the combat where I'd be pointing one way and my gun would fire the other. There's also points where, you know, you end up with enemies on top of crates or buildings or behind tree roots. But the thing is, the storytelling really carries this game over the line. So even if you find yourself getting into little clunky bits and getting a bit frustrated with it, it's so worth playing for the story alone. Having said that, one part of the system which is really special to Mass Effect is the biotic system. Now, you might consider this space magic, space wizardry, Jedi mind powers, but it is really fun to be using your gravitational science effects to throw things around the room, as well as throw Krogans up into the air using your magical lift powers. Now, having played later Mass Effect games like Andromeda, it's really interesting to see how that has progressed through the game series. And in this original game, you'll find it is a little bit clunky 
monkey, you have to access those biotic powers using the wheel, which does slow down combat quite a bit. I would love to see future Mass Effect games really draw on the dynamism of some other games that are out at the moment and actually make those biotic powers really fun and really dynamic. I think there's more that can be done there. Side quests in this game are also a little bit of a pain. There's a lot of menu digging in order to find out where you should go and what galaxy you should be in. On top of that, navigating the planets that you have to go to in this game, unless it's in a main quest line, can be a little bit frustrating. Your vehicles in this game are the Normandy, a state-of-the-art spaceship, which looks like a flying space lobster. And the Mako, the six-wheeled Mako is tougher than a horse in Skyrim. It can go down mountains, jump off cliffs, and basically go bungee jumping without doing any damage to it. The problem with the Mako is its speed is not particularly fast. So if you're exploring some of the planets in your side quest, be prepared to be driving for minutes on end across some very lonely landscapes. Having said that, what I do appreciate about the storytelling here is that the side quests do mean something and they do serve the overall arching narrative around the Geth invasion. Fulfilling those side quests can have benefits for your relationship with your crewmates and this comes more into play in later Mass Effect games where it can actually mean life or death consequences. Should you play Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition? Oh gosh, yes, I loved playing this. For all the faults and the little complaints that I do have, some of the clunky gameplay, what surpasses everything here is the storytelling. This is an epic story told on a grand scale, which makes you really emotionally invested in this world and these people. And it does so much heavy lifting in terms of the world building for Mass Effect 2 and 3. I was so grateful to be able to play this game on PlayStation 5. It's really exciting to see this come out at such a difficult time for many of us stuck in lockdown around the world. It is an excellent game and I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in the history of gaming, interested in RPGs, get yourself some Mass Effect because it is an essential game. I'm gonna keep you updated on how I go playing through the entire Mass Effect trilogy. But for the moment, if you liked this video, please hit subscribe, support my channel. I'm just small and growing at the moment. So I would love it if you hit subscribe. As always, if you've got any questions, please hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, enjoy your time in Mass Effect if you're gonna play it. And thanks so much for watching.